but I like to do some examples drawing Lewis structures. Here are five molecules. I want to point out that they're all covalently compounded molecules and they're all neutral. I mean, have no charge. Let's start off with water. So I pick oxygen as my central atom. And that is because it is the amount of atoms in this formula that are in the least. There's only one. Now I want to approach this from common pieces of bonding. In the other video, we saw that common forms of oxygen bonding is when oxygen has two lone pairs and two single bonds. The other was oxygen with a double bond and two lone pairs. Also, we saw oxygen with three single bonds and one lone pair, but that has a positive charge on it. And then we also saw oxygen with one single bond and three lone pairs. And in this situation, oxygen had a negative charge on it. Well, because water is a neutral compound, formula is written with no charge on it, we're going to disregard these two forms of oxygen. If you recall, these two forms of oxygen were good if you were asked to draw a polyatomic ion. We'll see some of those examples later. So back to these two forms. I need to consider. Well, we also have hydrogen to deal with. Well, the only way we saw hydrogen bonding was with one single bond. So if you start looking at, well, how am I going to connect this hydrogen with either one of these oxygens? Hmm. Well, this here is the only one that will work because it has two single bonds on it that are compatible with the single bond on a hydrogen. And if we now bring a hydrogen over here, we can see we could slip that right onto the single bond. And we have one on each side. And we have the lone pairs on the oxygen. And just as a reminder, Oxygen brings six electrons to the sharing party and it picks up its seventh and eighth electron from hydrogen when it shares its electrons. And hydrogen brings one electron to the sharing party and it picks up its second electron when it shares with oxygen. Okay, let's work with the next one, CO2. In this case, there's two oxygens and one carbon. So carbon is going to be the central atom. Common bonding for carbon, <clears throat> as we saw before, you had carbon with four single bonds, carbon with two double bonds, carbon with a double bond and two single bonds, and finally carbon with a triple bond and a single bond. Oxygen, as we just saw, two single bonds, lone pairs, and one double bond, two lone pairs. Now, I'm not showing the other two forms of oxygen, the one with the positive and the negative charge, because CO2, neutral, the formula is written with no charge. In fact, I'll emphasize all of them 
all that I've written up here are neutral. So with that being the case, we'll just consider these forms of oxygen. Well, because I only have two oxygens, and CO2, I could rule out these forms of carbon, these two forms of carbon, because they need three, in this case, three atoms oops, connected to it. And up here we need four. So, what's left is carbon with two double bonds and carbon with a triple bond and a single bond. Well, if I look at the pieces of oxygen that I have here, common bonding, I notice that none of them have a triple bond, so I could rule that out. The only one that seems to fit is oxygen with a double bond. And that will fit very nicely with carbon with two double bonds. So, I go ahead and write <clears throat> my Lewis structure with two oxygens, double bonds, and the corresponding lone pairs. And I completed my Lewis structure. Emphasizing again, the six electrons oxygen brings to the party, and it picks up its seventh and eighth electron from carbon when it shares its two electrons. Carbon brings four electrons and picks up its fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth when it shares with the two oxygens. Next, we'll do CH4. Well, I pick carbon as my central atom because there's only one of them. And there's four hydrogens. And again, the hydrogen bonds with one single bond. There's four of them. So, if you recall, the common pieces of carbon this one here seems to be the most apparent because it'll have four single bonds. I have four hydrogens and hydrogen bonds with single bonds only. So that seems to work out perfectly. You see that carbon brings four of its electrons, four in its valence. It picks up one, two, three, four from the hydrogens. Hydrogen brings one of each and picks up its second when it shares with carbon. Next, we'll look at CH2, Cl2. I'm going to pick carbon as my central atom because there's only one. And I know that I'm going to have at least two single bonds on the carbon because of the hydrogens. And there's two of them. Then I notice that there are two halogens or two chlorines. And in our previous video, we discussed that when the halogens behave as terminal atoms, they're going to bond with a single bond and three lone pairs. Again, this is for halogens as terminal atoms. So I put my chlorine on one of the single bonds and the chlorine on the other single bond.
that completes the Lewis structure for CH2Cl2. Next we'll do HCl. HCl has two atoms, hydrogen, which we know will only do this, and the chlorine, which will, when bonding with hydrogen, will only form a single bond. So we have a single bond between these two atoms. And chlorine, of course, has its three lone pairs around itself. Next, we'll look at a few examples that have atoms in group 5, nitrogen and phosphorus. So we'll do NH3 first. Pick nitrogen as our central atom and hydrogen as our terminal atoms. And we're forced to form single bonds with the hydrogen and the nitrogen. If you recall from common bonding for nitrogen, you want nitrogen to form three single bonds in this way, that one lone pair. Take a careful look. Nitrogen group five brings its five electrons to the sharing party and picks up its fifth or its sixth, seventh, and eighth, excuse me from the three hydrogens. Now I'll do PCL3 alongside of that. Phosphorus, central atom, is going to bond with three chlorines which are terminal and we saw that the halogens when they're terminal atoms will bond with one single bond and their three lone pairs around each halogen. And phosphorus of course has its one lone pair around itself. I want you to see something here because phosphorus and nitrogen are in the same group and phosphorus in this case is obeying the octet rule it looks electronically very similar to nitrogen it's bringing its five valence electrons and picking up its sixth, seventh, and eighth from chlorine and chlorine brings its seven to the sharing party but allows only one to be shared. And there's the one that's it's being shared. Next I'll do PCL5. In phosphorus pentachloride, PCL5, phosphorus is the central atom, and there are five terminal chlorine atoms. In this case, phosphorus is disobeying the octet rule in that it brings its five electrons to the sharing party, but picks up five more, giving its total number of electrons a count of ten. Each chlorine, on the other hand, is obeying the octet rule.
that it brings its one electron to be shared, has its three lone pairs, and picks up another electron from phosphorus when phosphorus shares its electron. And the phosphorus it picks up a total of five because each chlorine is sharing its one. Now we'll do two new structures with sulfur. First, H2S, which sounds like H2O. Well, in this case, sulfur is the central atom, and because it's in group six, behaves in this molecule exactly like oxygen, that it will not disobey the octet rule and has its two lone pairs and brings these two electrons to the sharing party and shares them with the two hydrogens. SF6 alongside Sulfur is the central atom, and there's six fluorines acting as terminal atoms. And because fluorine, the halogen, is a terminal atom, it has a single bond, and it's three lone pairs. But I want you to notice something about sulfur. It's disobeying the octet rule in that it has a total of 6 plus 6, which is 12 electrons total. Because sulfur will bring its 6 valence electrons to the sharing party and pick up 6 more from the 6 fluorines. One, two, three, four, five, six, and it picks up one from each of the fluorines. So to have a total of twelve electrons when it forms covalent bonds with the six fluorines. In this case, we see sulfur disobeying the octet rule here. And in this case, we see sulfur obeying the octet rule. So we've done SF6. Next, I'll do IF5. In this case, we have two halogens. Iodine is going to be the central atom. And fluorine will be terminal. We'll have five fluorine as terminal atoms. And because fluorine is a terminal atom, it will have one single bond and three lone pairs around each fluorine. Because iodine is in period five, it can disobey the octet rule. Now, iodine, like fluorine, is in group 7A. And that means they'll have seven valence electrons. Right now, we're only seeing one, 
two, three, four, five valence electrons shown in the Lewis structure for iodine. Well, we need two more, and those two more are going to come in as lone pairs. So now we can see iodine comes to the sharing party with its seven valence electrons. In this case, shares one, two, three, four, five. Unlike fluorine, which is terminal, brings seven, but three of those are in lone pairs, and only one of them is being shared. And so because each of the five fluorine brings one electron to the sharing party, iodine picks up one, two, three, four, five more for a total of 12 valence electrons.